everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise ye the Lord, for he and only he is worthy to be praised. Tonight, it is truly my honor to virtually stand before you to welcome you to the first night of the Great Greensboro District Linton Revival Service. And as we come together, as we reflect on this time and on this season, it is a time for us to be renewed. It's a time for us to be rejuvenated. It is a time for us to be refreshed and to reset ourselves in the presence of the Lord. So tonight, I am excited about this worship experience. I'm looking forward to night number two. I'm looking forward to night number three as we gather virtually to hear what thus says the Lord through his servants. So to our great presiding elder of the Great Greensboro District, the Reverend Dr. Michael E. Ellis Sr., to our beautiful First Lady of the Great Greensboro District, Mrs. Renee Ellis, to our lovely First Family, to our pastors, our ministers, our laity of the Great Greensboro District, and also to all of our virtual viewers and all of our virtual worshipers tonight, we bring you greetings in the marvelous and matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ. We're going to follow our order of worship as it's outlined in our program. And what we do in the tradition of our church is we do a call to worship. So we're going to ask those that can stand, if you will stand with me. If it's the tradition of your church to remain seated, please feel free to do so at this time. But when we do our call to worship, we're giving reverence to God, thanking him for his goodness, thanking him for his greatness. And that reminds me of Psalm 34, of what we should be doing about all that goodness and all that greatness of God. And it says that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast unto the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked into him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. So if you stood for the call to worship, you may be seated at this time for the invocation. Lord God, as we come in your presence tonight, we're thanking you for our lives. We're thanking you for our health. We're thanking you for our strength. We thank you, Lord, for another day of your continued grace and your continued mercy. We're thanking you for being the author and the finisher of our faith. We're thanking you for being our redeemer and our sustaining power. So now as we gather for this worship experience, we know, Lord God, this is a day that you have allowed us to see, a day that we've never seen, and a day that we will never see again. So let us make the most of what happens at this time, at this hour, right now. So Lord God, your Holy Spirit is requested in this place. We ask that you reign and that you rule supreme. We welcome you once in the name of the Father, twice in the name of the Son, three times in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. It is in Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. So as we think about this Lenten Revival service, our scriptural foundation comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. And it says, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So after our opening selection, our scripture lesson will be led by the Reverend Dr. Lisa Caldwell, which will be followed by the prayer by the Reverend Dr. Tyrone Rigsby. We will have a musical selection. We will have our offering and offertory. And we will have our awesome presiding elder of the great Greensboro district to present our speaker for the hour.
scripture lesson for tonight is coming from 2 Peter, starting at the first verse, and we'll be reading down through verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith, with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this, these, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgiven that he was cleansed from his own sins. Verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the Greensboro District. We thank you for our presiding elder. We thank you for the pastors on the Greensboro District. District, We pray and we thank you that you just continue to watch over us. We pray for our Lent revival. We pray for the situation that's going on in the world. We do know that you said in your word that you will never leave us or forsake us. you never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. We will always continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. And in Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen.
good evening, and thank you so much for joining the Greensboro District 2022 Latin Revival. We pray that you've enjoyed yourself thus far during the worship service. Now is an opportunity for you to continue in your worship by way of giving. Below is listed ways in which the various platforms in which you can give to the ministry here on the Greensboro District. We pray that you take advantage of those giving portals and be a blessing to the Greensboro District. We pray that you continue to be blessed. And we pray that God is blessing you even through the midst of whatever you may be going through. Let us pray now as we receive the offering. Heavenly and gracious God, we are grateful and thankful for the gift and the giver. We pray now, God, in Jesus' name, that you continue to bless the seed offerings that we received in this offering in Jesus' name. God, we pray that you bless this offering tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold, one hundredfold for the upbuilding building of the kingdom right here on the Greensboro District. Bless us now, God, and we'll be ever so careful to give you all honor and all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for your gift, and we pray that you will continue to enjoy this Lenten revival. Peace and blessing. My brothers and sisters, what a joy it is to greet you this evening as we have come to worship God during our Lenten Revival, Greensboro District, grace and peace to you from God our Creator, Jesus our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. It is my joy and happy privilege to present and introduce to you the tribal chieftain of our district. He is the journeyman from Salisbury, North Carolina, by way of the Morse Chapel AME Zion Church, an alumnus of our institutions, both Livingstone College and Hood Theological Seminary, receiving his Doctor of Ministry degree from the Theological School of Drew University, and has served this church with dexterity and fidelity. He is noted for his preaching powers, and we are delighted that he leads this district with a firm yet peaceful hand, and how grateful we are to have him lead us into this Lenten season. If ever there was a time for us to really have centering and anchoring, that time is now. And I'm thankful that we have a leader for such a time as these. Greensboro District, brothers and sisters, those who've come to worship, will you join me as we welcome our presiding elder who will now come and present our preacher. God bless you. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell, for your introduction. It is my pleasure to present to you tonight our preacher for our first night of our revival here in the Greensburg District. I present to you tonight a servant of God who comes to us from being born in the parsonage at Jones Memorial Amy Zion Church in Columbia, South Carolina, where his father then, who is now Bishop George Washington Carver Walker Sr., Mrs. Geraldine Jackson Walker, former missionary supervisor, was the pastor at the time. He is a son of the parsonage who was educated in the Chicago Public Schools. He is a graduate of the Percy Julian High School in 1987. He is the recipient of his BA degree in political science from Morehouse College in 1992 and a Master of Divinity degree from Hood Seminary in 1997. He is the former president of the National Christian Youth Council of the AME Zion Church, and under his leadership, it is now known as the Varick Christian Youth Council. He also established the name of the choir now known as the C.R. Thompson Youth Choir. He has served on various connectional and community boards. Currently, he serves as a member of the Restructuring Committee, Chair of the Chicago District Conference Studies, Examiners Committee, and Assistant Treasurer of the Michigan Annual Conference. He has pastored many churches, including the Prospect AME Zion Church in Monroe, Georgia, Indian Hill AME Zion Church in Fort Mill, South Carolina, Union Ezel AME Zion Church in Fort Lawn, South Carolina, St. Matthew Gordon AME Zion Church in Chicago, Illinois. Presently, he is the pastor of the St. Mark AME Zion Church 
in East Chicago, Indiana. He is a proud father of four, a proud husband of one, and a servant of the only one that matters, Jesus Christ. It is my honor and privilege to present to you tonight the Reverend George Washington Carver Walker, Jr., the pastor of the St. Mark AME Zion Church, East Chicago, Indiana, who will bring the message for this opening night of our Lent revival. I ask that you keep him in prayer and sit in your tent door that God would use him in a mighty and miraculous way. God bless you, Reverend Walker. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
to the Right Reverend Darrell Brewster Starnes, the presiding president of the Piedmont Episcopal District, to Mrs. Camille Cullum Starnes, missionary supervisor of Piedmont, to the Reverend Dr. Michael E. Ellis, the esteemed presiding elder of the Greensboro District of the West Central North Carolina Annual Conference and to his lovely bride, Sister Renee Ellis. To our host pastor, Reverend Dr. Tracy Miller, pastor of the Wesley Chapel Church. To all of the ecclesiastical prognosticators of God's word of this wonderful district, to all of the ministers and district officers, to all of the saints and to all of the ain'ts. Words cannot express how elated I am to have been asked a few days ago to bring a word from the Lord on this high and holy occasion as we celebrate the liturgical season of Lent when we began to consider Calvary. Uh, please know that in the words of Howard Thurman, that you have not placed a crown upon my head, but you have placed a crown above my head, and I hope one day to grow tall enough to wear it. As we consider the word on the day, I, I would that you would turn with us to hymn number 454 one of my favorite hymns in the world. O thou in whose presence my soul takes delight, on whom in affliction I call. You're my comfort by day, my song in the night, my hope, my salvation, and my own. Let us sing to the glory of God, hymn number 454. O thou in whose presence. O thou in whose presence my soul takes delight. O Affliction, I call my call for my day and my song in the night. My hope, my salvation, my Dear shepherd, resort with thy sheep to feed them in pastures of love. Say why in the valley of death should I weep?
restore my Savior, the light of thy face, thy soul in come for him. Yes, sir.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thou in your presence, my soul takes the light. Is there anybody testimony this morning? Don't you just love being in the presence of the Lord? Don't you just enjoy being in his company? In his presence, there is joy. In his presence, there is peace. Yes. My hope, my salvation, my church say amen amen again come on amen just one more time for those who have your bibles if you would turn with us to the new testament book of romans paul's letter to the church at rome chapter number five Romans chapter 5 and we shall commence our reading at verse number 17 that's Romans chapter 5 beginning at verse number 17 and it says for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. This is God's word for God's people. Let us pray. Come thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword, our prayer attend. Come and thy people bless, come give thy word success, spirit of holiness on us descend. Grab me now, O God, that anointing that makes preaching possible. God, take me out of me and then fill me with thee, that you might receive all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. God, be in my mind and in my thinking, my heart and in my feeling, but most of all, oh God, be in my tongue and in my speaking, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be acceptable in thy sight. For God, you are my strength and even my redeemer. In Jesus' name. want to use this morning as a subject, I'm covered. I'm covered. I need your prayers. 
It has been approximately one year and seven months since this nation and the world was warned about a deadly and highly contagious virus that, be contra that can be contracted through the air that was spreading at an alarming rate, better known as the coronavirus COVID-19. The Center for D Disease Control, the National Institute of Health, and other health organizations recommended that we take extreme precautionary measures in order to minimize its spread and to prevent more fatalities. We were told to do three things. One, we were told to quarantine ourselves by not going to unessential places. Two, if we just had to go out, we were told to social distance by staying at least six feet from the nearest individual. And three, we were told to wear a mask. These were the three recommendations, and if we followed them, it would not only minimize its spread, but also the number of deaths. Unfortunately, in spite of these measures, over 700,000 persons have died nationally and over four million globally. We were all taken by surprise. But at that time, most of us abided by the new restrictions and recommendations. We began to curtail our travel, social distance, and wearing masks. Most of us decided that we were going to trust the scientific experts who have studied these kind of diseases and viruses for years and have the training, skill, and knowledge to make the analysis, diagnosis, and prognosis for the same. Such a strange time it was families who normally got together just because became limited in their ability to do so. Schools, businesses, and other venues were forced to shut their doors. Places of worship were forced to do ministry in unique and inventive ways. And I don't know about you, but as a person and as a pastor, I'm not ashamed to admit that I wasn't ready for this. But what is so awesome about God is that he has continued to sustain and keep us even through this pandemic. We have had some sicknesses and some sadness, but God has kept us. We have had some grief and some gloom but God has kept us. We have seen many dangers, toils, and snares, but is there anybody who is glad to say that God kept me and he wouldn't let go? Not only has he kept you, but he has also kept his church. And although we have not been able to meet in person, the doors of the church have remained open. This church and other ministries have been keeping it moving, not in the same way and not in the same manner, but the church has remained open and available to those who know him and to those who seek him. The church has remained open for souls to be saved, for the hungry to be fed, and for the lost to be found we have been keeping it moving. So because of this virus that we have never heard of and its propensity and possibility to actually cause death to those who contract it, I and many of you were concerned. 
and hoped that some kind of cure or vaccine would soon become available. So around January of this year, a vaccine was developed and that certain segments of the population could begin receiving it. Now, I must admit that at first, I did have some skepticism and was hesitant because I didn't know how they came up with this so quickly. But when I heard from Dr. Fauci, who is the pre premier viral expert and scientist in the world, and then when I heard about Dr. Kizzy Corbin, who has been working on this coronavirus for years, I became more confident in its ability to keep me, my family, and indeed all of us safe. I'm not sure about what you were looking or who you were listening to, but I wanted to hear from the experts, not the president at the time, the experts, not the political pundits, the experts. I wanted to hear from those who are well informed and experienced in the matter, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Corbin. They provided evidence and tried to assure the American people that the vaccine was safe and would protect us from long-term hospitalization and death. And that was enough for me. You mean to say that if you take this vaccine that the probability of me being hospitalized and dying is decreased? Give me that. Can I get a witness? But what has been so disturbing is the intentional and unfortunately successful ploy to politicize a pandemic. In other words, to believe and or follow the recommendations based on a political affiliation or ideology. It is so unfortunate and disturbing to see people who refuse to wear a mask and get vaccinated because of their political and ideological allegiances. I know that most of you know this, but for those who don't, let me say that this virus does not care about your politics. This virus does not care about your religion. This, this virus does not care about your gender. It doesn't care about your age. It doesn't care about your race. It doesn't care about your shape. It doesn't care about your color. It has the potential to affect all of us one way or another. So I just wanted to know the facts. Again, the facts from the professionals and not the politicians. So the facts are this, over 95% of those who have died from COVID-19 since the vaccine has been available are those who were unvaccinated which means that only 5% of those who have died were vaccinated. Just talking about the facts. Wearing a mask decreases not only the contraction, but also the spread of the virus. Just the facts. The vaccine reduces the probability that you will be hospitalized. Just the facts. And that's all I want or need, facts. Not opinions, facts. Not talking points, facts. And the, the Center for Disease Control, the National Institute of Health, the Department of Health and Human Services, the World Health Organization, and most state and local government health agencies all agree that the vaccine works 
and that the efficacy rate is high. In other words, those who are vaccinated, according to health officials, will be covered or protected by the vaccine's power and ability. Now, lest I be accused of biblical negligence, let me hurriedly say that that word efficacy caught my attention, y'all. Because efficacy means the capacity for producing a desired result or effect. Other words used to describe efficacy is adequacy, potency, competence, and sufficiency. Now, because it is Sunday, I feel it necessary to talk about Jesus, for he is the propitiation or the sufficient sacrifice for our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world, which leads us to our text this morning. We, we are talking about Jesus, in whom we trust and believe in whom our salvation is secured, Jesus, from whom we have received power and authority, Jesus, in whom we live, move, and have our being, Jesus. Uh, now, I really didn't mean to go there, but I believe that I just scooted into the realm of salvation, the principle upon which the church stands salvation the primary result of the complete action of god through his son that was demonstrated on calvary jesus upon whom when he is accepted because you're accepting jesus the son of god as your savior and see that's why i preach jesus not sure why others preach what they preach but I preach Jesus because that's who, who we should preach and salvation in him has its end. And that's why the probability and certainty comes to bear. COVID is a probability of contraction. You can probably get COVID and if contracted, you can probably die. But certainty is different. Death is not a probability. It is a certainty. The Bible says in Hebrews that it is appointed man once to die and then the judgment. If there is anything in life that is certain, it is death and also the promise of eternal life. So because of the certainty of death, you ought to make sure that you are saved and you ought to make sure that you are covered. So I only have two points this morning. You ought to be covered because number one, we have been exposed to sin. I said we have been exposed to sin. You know what sin is. Sin is a transgression or of a divine law or will. It is the violation of God's rule and authority. Sin causes a void or a separation between the finite and the infinite between the holy and the human, and the creator and the created. You must remember that Adam is the progenitor of all mankind. He is what I like to call the prototype of all humanity. God created and placed him upon the earth for a purpose. And that was to have dominion of the place that he created 
but that his enemy control. So Adam, as we discussed a few weeks ago, was to be God's representative of heaven upon the earth and to have authority in a region that was ruled by the enemy. But because of sin, Adam and Eve failed the assignment. But Romans chapter 5 and 8 reminds us that but God commended his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that same Christ is the propitiation or sufficient sacrifice for our sins, and not ours only, but the sins of the whole world. So that's why I'm so excited about our text this morning. In this fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Rome, he begins by talking about the fruits of justification. Now you must understand that justification is the reality of being declared righteous by God because of the actions of Christ. And the fruits of justification are described in verses 2 through 5 of this fifth chapter of Romans because it says that we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. In other words, there are some benefits to being declared righteous by God. But further along in this letter, he lets them know why they needed to be justified in the first place. And that's because of one man, and his name was Adam. Verse 12 says, Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But although we have been exposed to sin, I'm glad to announce to you that number two, we have been covered by the Savior. Because Romans chapter 5 and 18 and 19 says, By the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, Jesus, shall many be made righteous. Christ completed what Adam left undone. Christ finished what Adam started. And that's why I'm so excited about justification. And you know, you should be as well. Because what justification does, it covers our sins with the righteousness of Christ. You see, God hates sin and does not look upon sin. And sin is in fact enmity or an enemy of God. And, and one cannot have fellowship with him with sin. But when you are saved, you are declared righteous or you have been justified and are covered 
by the blood of Christ. So when God looks at you, he does not see your sin, but he sees his son who is our savior. Is there anybody out there who is glad that you are covered where you were once separated because you are covered, you are now attached. When you were once estranged because you are covered, you are now joined together with him. When you were once lost because you were covered, you are now found. When you were once dead because you are covered, you now have access to eternal life. And it's all because of the blood of Jesus. Now Romans chapter 5 is the New Testament. But you do remember the Old Testament example of the same. God told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And because he refused, Egypt was inflicted with many plagues and diseases. One of which was the death angel, which would ride throughout the city and whosoever house it came upon, who did not have the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, the death angel would kill the firstborn son. In other words, whoever was covered would be saved. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm covered. I may be sick, but I'm covered. I may be broken, but I'm covered. I may be distressed, but I'm covered. I may be going through, but I'm covered. Is there anybody out there who's glad this morning because you are covered? In fact, Paul says, what can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or so on? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, because we have been covered by his blood. And I don't know about you this morning, but I want to celebrate him because I realize that I have been covered. And no matter what the enemy tries to do to separate me from him, because I am covered, I am under his wing. Is there anybody out there who's glad this morning because you are covered? Listen, I may not deserve to be covered, but I'm so glad that he covered me anyhow. I may have done things uh, and have committed sins uh, of omission and uh, of commission, but uh, I'm glad this morning that uh, in spite of all of that, uh, that I'm still covered. Uh, and the reason I shout uh, on a good Sunday morning uh, is because I know uh, that he covers me. Is there anybody out there who's happy that he covers you? And because he covered you, you can rejoice in the God of your salvation. Yeah. Is there anybody out there who wants 
to give God glory because of what Christ did on Calvary. Yeah, there's a story about a little boy who enjoyed making model toys. He made model cars and he made model planes. But one day he made a model sailboat. He painted the sailboat. He crafted the sailboat. And he enjoyed what the sailboat looked like so much that he took the sailboat down to the nearest pond to see whether or not his sailboats would float. He put the boat in to the water and the sailboat floated so well that the boat floated down the stream and he lost his boat but one day he was walking down the street and he looked into a pawn shop window and he saw his boat he got happy and went into the pawn shop and said pawn shop owner that boat in the window is my boat and the owner said I'm sorry but it's my boat and if you want that boat I'll give it to you at the right at the right price well little boy went in his pocket and pulled out a piece of change and placed it on the counter and the owner gave him that boat and when the boy got outside of the store he looked at that boat and said boat you're mine three times you're mine once because I made you your mind twice because I found you and your mind three times because I paid the price for you yeah is there anybody who's glad that Jesus paid it all as a matter of fact the hymn writer said alas and did my savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote that sacred head for such shock a worm as I was it for crimes that I have done that he grown upon the tree amazing pity grace unknown and love beyond degree but drops of grief can never repay the debts of love I owe here Lord I give myself away 
gives his all heart that I can do. Yeah, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the lights and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Yeah, and now I'm happy. Anybody happy that at the cross he covered you? You were nasty, but he covered you. You were dirty, but he covered you. You were sinful, but he covered you. Say yeah, I'm so glad that I am covered by the blood of Jesus. Say yeah. Yeah. Yay! Yay! What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Of Jesus, say yeah, say yeah. I'm covered. I said I'm covered. Yeah, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, covered from eternal death, covered from the enemy. Is there anybody who knows that you're covered by the blood? Yeah. Jesus, listen, yeah, you need to be sure that you are covered, amen, listen, I know that there is a major controversy going on about this vaccine. Whether or not you ought to receive the vaccine. Whether or not the vaccine is safe. Let me tell you something. Not only am I covered but I'm also vaccinated. And I recommend that you get vaccinated as well. But I also want to let you know that I do believe that it is your choice. But whether you are vaccinated or not, My major concern this morning is that you are covered not with the vaccine, <laughs> but that you are covered in the blood of Jesus. 
Because as we said earlier, there is a probability of contracting the virus. But, but death is certain. And you want to be sure that when you die, and that you need to know that Jesus has covered you. So tonight if you're here and you know not the Lord and the pardon of your sins, please know that there are a plethora of churches on this district who will be able to lead you into a deeper knowledge of Christ. So if you're here, we invite you to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you.